everybody, Lisa here from Rocco Baby Crochet. I hope you're all well and having a great week. A massive warm welcome back to all my regular viewers and subscribers. It's lovely to have you here and thank you for supporting the channel. Massive warm welcome to anybody who's just found the channel for the first time. I hope you stick around, enjoy this tutorial and consider subscribing which will mean that you won't miss out on my next free pattern or tutorial and it really would help support Rocco Baby Crochet as well. So today's quick tutorial we're going to be learning how to crochet the Royal Ridge Stitch. Now I love this stitch. It's one of those stitches that looks a little bit fancier than it is. It creates a beautiful texture on both sides so it's a reversible pattern and it's only a one row repeat. So it's a really easy stitch pattern to learn. This tutorial is all about the actual Royal Ridge Stitch so if you need support in learning the stitches and techniques that go into making it I'll leave links to those videos in the description of this tutorial. Along with the video tutorial there's also written instructions over on my blog there's a link to my blog in the description to this video if you prefer a written pattern to follow. So grab your hooks, grab your yarn, grab a cuppa and let's learn this stitch together. Royal Ridge stitch is worked in rows so you'll need to begin by making yourself a slip knot and placing that on your hook. Now the foundation chain can be any number of chains that you want so you'll want to make your foundation chain to as wide as you want your project to be and then you'll chain one and that's just going to be used as a turning chain it's not going to count in your width of your project so you're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through for as wide as you want your project to be. I'm just going to do a really small sample here in chain 20, but you work your foundation chain to the width that you want and then add one onto that. So if you want to press pause while you do that and come back to me when you're ready to move up to row one. So once you've got your foundation chain to the width that you want your project, I've just wanted to do a small sample here. So I chained 20 and then added one on for my turning chain. So I've got a foundation chain of 21. You're then going to start for row one and you're going to place a double crochet in the second chain from hook. It's completely up to you whether you want to work from the front of your project. So you'll work from the front here in your second chain. I just prefer to turn my work over and work into the back bumps so I'll work into my second back bump here but your back bumps are just the bumps that run down the center of each chain there's your first one and there is the second one and into that second chain I'm going to place a UK double crochet so you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Now this tutorial is more showing you the pattern of the Royal Ridge so if you do need a little bit extra support on stitches then I'll leave links to the videos for all the stitches that are involved in creating this pattern in the description to the video so check those out if you need a little bit more support. You're then just going to work your way all the way across your foundation chain placing one double crochet in every chain along until you get to the very end. So if you want to press pause while you make your way across placing one double crochet into every chain and then come back to me when you're ready to move up to row two. I'm just placing my very last double crochet into the first chain that I made and that's the end of row one so your work should be looking a little bit like this at the end of row one. To move up to row two you're going to chain one and turn your work. The chain one doesn't count as a stitch here or throughout this pattern it is just a turning chain and for row two what we're going to do is starting in the this very first stitch underneath where our chain one is we're going to place a UK half treble crochet so you're going to yarn over insert your hook into that stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and we're placing one half treble crochet in every stitch across so make sure that you're counting your stitches and your stitch count remains the same you should have a stitch count of one less stitch than the number of chains that you started with. Remembering we skipped one chain for a turning chain right at the beginning. But if you want to press pause while you make your way across for row two, placing one UK half treble crochet in every stitch across and come back to me when you're ready to move up to row three. I'm just placing my last half treble crochet of row two 
and your work should now look a little bit like this. To move up to row three, you're going to chain one and turn and row three is the repeat row for the whole of this pattern. So you're going to repeat row three until your project is at the length or height that you want it to be at. What we're going to do for row three is we're going to do a row of half treble crochets again, but instead of working into the top of the stitches like we normally would do, so underneath these two strands of yarn that make up the V, we're going to actually be placing the half treble crochet around the third loop. So when we look at our stitch, we've got the stitch the top of the stitch here the loop furthest away is the back loop and then we've got the loop that is closest to us is known as the front loop and then if you turn your work so it's on its side you'll notice this third loop which is here just underneath your front loop and that's the loop that we're going to be working around and you can see them just running all the way along underneath those front loops all the way across. Once you've placed a couple of these third loop half treble crochets, you'll notice that your work is naturally turning so that the loops are easier to find just because the stitches that we've already put there pushes your work that way. So what we're going to do is, again, this is a turning chain and doesn't count as a stitch. So we're gonna work into this very first third loop here. You're going to yarn over, drop your hook down around the front underneath that third loop yarn over and pull up a loop so you've got your three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops and then you're just going to move across to your next third loop and place another half treble crochet there and one in every third loop all the way across for row three and what crocheting in this third loop does is it naturally pushes your top of the stitch forward and that's what creates the beautiful ridge and the texture of this piece of work. So if I turn it over you'll already be able to see the ridge forming here. So they're the top of all my stitches that's just been pushed forwards and creating that ridge. So you'll yarn over, go underneath the third loop and place a half treble crochet in every stitch across. Now if you want to come back to me just before you're finishing your third row and I'll just show you how we finish the row. It's exactly the same but sometimes the third loop is a little less visible so I'll just show you in case you need to find that we can finish the row together and move up to row four. I'm just at my last stitch of row three and like I said it can get a little bit more confusing because you've got a turning chain as well as your stitch here. So always remember if you look at your work from the front and you can locate the top of your stitch which is just here and then if you turn it away from you a little bit it's this this loop here which is just poking up because the rest of the stitches have forced them forward. So if you find the top of your stitch on the front which is just here and if you turn it forward slightly you'll be able to see that third loop is just there. So that's where you're placing your last stitch of every row. And then all you'll do is chain one and turn your work and continue working half treble crochets into that third loop for as many rows as you want your project to be. So it's a really simple pattern but it creates such a fabulous texture. Please don't forget that there's written instructions if you prefer the written instructions over on my blog and I'll leave a link to that in the, in the description of this video. I'll also pop in the, the videos which show these stitches in more details just in case you need a bit more support with the stitches themselves and drop me a comment below if you've used this stitch what you've used it for or even if you want to see another stitch tutorial that I've not covered yet pop me a comment in the comment box and then I'll be able to film that tutorial for you please don't forget if you haven't already subscribed to the channel but you enjoy these tutorials hit the subscribe button and the bell notification it just means you won't miss out on my next pattern or tutorial release and it really does help the channel as well. So I hope you have lots of fun with this stitch and I'd love to see any ways that you use it over on the Facebook group. We've got a lovely little community growing over there and I love being able to chat to you all because it feels a little bit one-sided on YouTube sometimes. So take care, have a great week everybody and I'll see you real soon. Bye!